And uh, I would like to thank the organizers for this conference, uh, for making this conference possible. Uh, and uh, I'm really glad and happy to be here with you in person. So uh, my presentation will be about the property disputes. And uh, during the first, uh, can you switch to my PowerPoint? Ah, sorry. Totally forget about that. Okay. So uh, during the war, uh, thousands of Ottoman uh, Christians were dispossessed and there was a massive wealth transfer process, which the government attempted to control through legal means such as the abandoned properties law. After the war, the question of what would happen to these properties and their owners became a pressing political matter. In this presentation, I will examine this issue with a particular focus on the activities of two institutions operated by the British High Commission, the Armenian Greek section and the Mixed Commission for Property Claims in Istanbul and its surroundings. During the war, thousands of Christians were deported or forced into migration. The Ottoman government wanted to maintain the democratic demographic situation established during the war due to genocide, massacres, and population movements. However, the issue of the return of Christians who were deported or migrated came to the table as soon as the Committee of Union and Progress lost the control of the government, and the war seemed to reach an end for the Ottoman Empire. Uh, so on uh, 18 October 1918, it is after the resignation of the of Talat Pasha and before the signing of the Mudros uh, Armistice, Ahmed Izzet Pasha government uh, took a decision concerning returns. According to this decision, deported Armenians could return to their hometowns. A few weeks later, the deportation law, which was adopted in May 1915, was also annulled. In line with these developments, Armenian and uh, Greeks started to return to their former places of residence. According to one newspaper, uh, the Ileri newspaper, the number of Armenians and Greeks who returned in the period between the start of the armistice and February 1920 was around 350,000. These returns led to considerable tension on the ground because many of the properties belonging to these people, including the homes that they would uh, come back to, were not empty. They were allocated to Muslim immigrants, sold in auctions, or seized by the local power holders. There were also properties being used by government agencies. This situation and the resistance of the new occupants of these properties were at the heart of this uh, tension. At the beginning of the armistice period, the Ottoman state started to work on a law for restitution. This law, later called Vahdettin degree, aimed at regulating the outcomes of the uh, abandoned properties law. While the intention for the uh, Adoption of such a legal measure was expressed as early as uh, late 1918. There was a significant delay in its finalization. This draft was completed uh, more than a year later and was adopted on 8 January 1920. Until this law, the government attempted to this matter through orders and decisions. As I said, there were two institutions working on the uh, on this issue in the armistice period. One of them was the Armenian Greek section which was established uh, in February 1919 and based at the British Embassy in Istanbul. Uh, this section uh, actually uh, was working on five topics. There were the identification of offenders, provision of relief to those in need, repatriation and restitution of property, resolution of the problems related to Islamized Christians and Christians who were held by Muslim individuals, and dealing with the issue of Greeks and Armenians who were in prisons. Uh, the section was provided with some general uh, instructions uh, to follow in conducting its operations. According to these instructions, the section would re repatriate the refugees and feed them, evacuate the occupied houses belonging to refugees, and return all usurped property. It would also hand over all illegally detained people and provide security to the survivor of massacres. In sum, return, uh, the return of seized properties to their original owners was among the main objectives of this organization. The section uh, also had local branches in different uh, uh, cities. And between 1990 and 1922, it held 87 meetings. The second important issue uh, institution working on this matter was the mixed 
Commission for the Property Claims. This commission was established in March 1919, following a meeting between the Assistant High Commissioner, Sir Richard Webb, and Grand Vizier Ferit Pasha. The, head, the headquarters of this commission was also at the British Embassy in Pera, and its task was to consider applications from non-Muslims for the restitution of property that had been forcibly uh, confiscated during the war. This mixed commission also included a representative uh, of the Minister of the Interior. Thus, the government was directly, the Ottoman government was directly represented in this organization. Similar to the Armenian Greek section, it was also at local branches. And the, uh, the commission, the mixed commissions at the local level had Armenian Greek and Turkish uh, members, and Turkish officials had the final say in the decision making, making process. Until 1922, uh, 1500 applications were uh, taken under review by the mixed, by the commission. It had reached a decision on 400 of uh, these cases, and uh, 150 applications were decided in favor of the applicant, and 250 return requests were denied. So there were, in fact, a symbolic number of return decisions because there were thousands of seized, proper seized and confiscated properties and only 150 return decisions. Uh, so starting uh, with late 1919, the commission began to exper experience uh, significant significant hardships while conducting its work. Around this time, the Ottoman government submitted a note in response to one of the cases reviewed by the commission and suggested that it saw the operations of the commission as encouragement. In this note, it was argued that the final say in such disputes did not lie with the mixed commission, but with the Ottoman courts. British High Commissioners strongly objected this argument and uh, mixed commissions continued their operation, but their decisions were frequently taken to, uh, to course by the Ottoman government. An important development concerning this issue uh, was the signing of the Treaty of Ser in August 1920. This treaty included a specific article concerning the return of properties. In Article 144, it was stated that the government recognized the injustice of the abandoned properties law and declared it null and void. According to this article, these properties would be restored to their original owners, and the task of managing this process would be carried out by arbitral com commissions, composed of an Ottoman official, a representative from a non-Muslim community, and a chairman appointed by the League of Nations. After the signing of this treaty, the tensions between the British High Commissioner and the Ottoman government took a new turn. The High Commissioner wanted to turn the mixed commissions into arbitral commissions that would be formed in line with the treaty. The government, on the other hand, started to argue that return efforts, efforts should have to wait until the formation of these new commissions and to reject the implementation of the decision of the mixed commissions. So in the beginning of 1921, these tensions reached new heights. After the mixed commission sent a note to the property registration office, to change the records in line with one of its decisions, the registry wanted clarification from, from the government concerning the authority of the commission. Upon this, the Office of Legal Counsel at the Minister of Foreign Affairs prepared, prepared a report in February 1921. According to this uh, report, the activities of the mixed commission led to the encroachment of the authorities of Ottoman courts, and the commission was not an official institution. Furthermore, the Office of Legal Counsel suggested that the resolution of property matters would be within the mandate of arbitration commissions that would be formed, formed in line with the SAF Treaty. In other words, the text of this treaty, generally seen as a blow to Ottoman sovereignty, was actually utilized to push for this sovereignty in some respects. In March 1921, the Ministry sent its evaluations to the Grand Vizirate. Referring to the report of the Legal Council Office, they claimed that the activities of the Commission were not only against the legislation in force, but also against the principles of law, and that it could not be seen as a formal institution. At this point, the Ottoman state did not go further and make a move such as withdrawing its representative from the Commission or giving a note demanding the termination of the activities of the Commission. However, it became increasing, increasingly difficult for the Commission to carry out its activities because its decisions were not being implemented. 
So it's seen in, in this uh, documents, the qualities of the commission and its legality were contested. But this, this was not the only source of the disagreement between the Ottoman authorities and the British High Commission. There were also differences of opinion concerning the substance of restitution policies. In general, the Ottoman authorities wanted the properties to stay in the hands of people that had seized them or whom these properties were allocated. As they pushed for the payment of sums instead of the return of properties to their original owners. According to the High Commissioner, this was unacceptable and the properties themselves should have been returned to their owner. So at this point, uh, I want to give some examples uh, from the decisions of the mixed commission. So one of these uh, cases uh, concern a farm in Büyük Çekmece. Uh, before the war, this farm, which had 3,000 uh, donims of land, belonged to the two Greek brothers, Aleko and Istavi Nikol Nikolaidis. The brothers used to live in this property and also kept cattle there. In 1917, Enver Pasha compelled them to transfer this property to his wife, Naciye Sultan, and his agents misappropriate the animals on the farm. After the application of the brothers after the war, the mixed commission decided for the return of farm to them. Naciye Sultan objected to this decision, and her object objection was part supported by the legal counsel. Uh, according to legal counsel, since the Naciye Sultan had the title deed, the property could only be transferred to someone else through a court decision. However, they also stated that since this was an administrative measure, the objection could only be made to the mixed commission. Following this decision, the Minister of the Interior caused the brothers to be replaced in possession of the farm. However, a couple of months later, the representatives of Najee Sultan forcibly resumed possession of the farm. When the brothers applied to the district governor, he refused to intervene, stating that he could not do so unless there were instructions from the government. On the other hand, in 1920, the Council of Ministers took a decision concerning this property. According to this decision, Najee Sultan would pay four years of rent for, the, for this property, but this sum was not paid uh, because the authorities uh, were unable to locate the Sultan and uh, were not able to ensure this payment. As seen in this case, even at the beginning of, the, the of, of this process, when the resistance of Ottoman authorities was weaker, there were problems concerning the implementation of this commission, uh, implementation of the decisions of the commission. Another case was related to a farm in Chorlu. This farm called Sultan Chifli belonged to a man named Andon Bey. During the war, Suleyman Bey, the brother of the former president of the parliament, Hacı Adil Bey, forced Andon Bey into selling, this, selling the farm to him for a small sum, utilizing the influence of his brother. In this case, the mixed commission decided for the return of the farm to Andon Bey, but Suleyman Bey objected to this decision. He argued that since Andon was an Ottoman citizen, the commission could not interfere in this dispute. He also called the government into action, demanding it to protect his rights stemming from his Ottoman nationality. It was at the context of this event that the Ottoman state sent a note to the High Commission suggesting that its activities constitute encroachment. So another case, uh, and one of the most important cases decided by the Commission concerned a steamship. This ship named uh, SS Ararat belonged to an Armenian named uh, Dikran Gümüşcüyan. During the war, the ship then named as Mahmud Şevket Pasha was rented by the Ottoman state, but it sank after an attack. The Minister of War paid Gümüşcüyan a sum for the wreck, sold it to the maritime administration, which recovered and restored the ship. In the armistice period, Gümüşcüyan applied to the commission as well as the Ottoman courts. The commission decided for the return of the ship, and this return was forcibly carried out by the occupying British naval forces in September 1920. I think this was one of the reasons why this case caused uproar from the ranks of the Ottoman bureaucracy. So this is the photograph of the ship. Uh, as I noted in 1921, there was an increase in the resistance of Ottoman authorities to the decision of the mixed commission. In July 1921, the High Commissioner noted that in recent months, he had observed a tendency 
on the part of the Ottoman authorities to ignore the commission decisions that were in favor of non-Muslims. An example of this concerned a vegetable garden in Anadolu Hisara. This garden belonged to Vasil, Vasil Hacıoğlu. During the war, Lazistan deputy Sofuzade Süleyman Sude Efendi had forcibly, had forcibly bought this property and also had it, had it registered under his name. Vasil Bey applied to the Mixed Commission after the war for the return of this property. The commission decided in his favor and applied to the government for the accomplishment of the necessary formali formal formalities by the property registration office. However, the registration office did not carry out this procedure and referred to the matter to the supply court. The case was then transferred to the Council of State. The British High Commissioner, Sir Horace Rumwald, objected to this course of events, claiming that the dec decisions of the mixed commission were final, close to revisions, and could not be taken to courts. He also requested the government to inform the registration office to make the necessary changes without delay. So it's in, it, in this case, there was also some kind of institutional resistance to the decisions of the mixed commission. So finally, uh, I want to underline that during the war, there were also uh, different properties like uh, animals, uh, piano or books uh, that, that were also uh, seized and the commission also took decisions regarding these uh, properties. And in one of these cases, a man named Yorgi demanded the return of his uh, animals. 17 of his cows were kept by the Yakupa in his farm in Büyükdere, and his two mules were in the possession of a man named Kasim. So the, uh, the mixed commission also decided uh, to return these uh, animals to Yorgia, and it actually uh, they were actually, in fact, uh, returned. So, so it's seen uh, in it's seen in this. Uh, cases starting from the late 1919, the mixed commission had difficulties in implementing its decisions. By the first month of 1921, almost all Ottoman institutions were claiming that the commission did not have legal standing, reviewed cases beyond its authority, and should have been abolished. However, they were unable to do so without the consent of the High Commission. And in March 1922, Shevket Bey, Under Secretary of State for Foreign Affairs, told the High Commission that the Mixed Commission had no legal standing because it had never been recognized by an imperial irade, imperial order. High Commission objected to this opinion, saying that the Commission was instituted with the agreement of the government and a high official from the Minister of Interior had been regularly sitting on the Commission and the decisions were signed jointly and executed by the Minister of Interior. And the final decision of the Office of Legal Counsel regarding this matter uh, was taken on uh, 20 August 1922. And it also followed a similar reasoning. Uh, the report stated that the works, the works of the Mixed Commission had infringed on the duties and authorities of the <laughs> Ottoman courts and institutions. Since it was established as a result of the verbal agreement without the approval of Council of Ministers, it was recommended that the commission be terminated. So, uh, to conclude, uh, as seen in this examination, restitution of confiscated or seized properties generated a significant degree of tension between the Ottoman authorities and occupying forces. Starting with the initial years of occupation, Ottoman bureaucrats approached the matter with a perspective that underlined Ottoman sovereignty and resisted the calls calls for the return of properties. Institutions such as the High Commissioner or the Ar Armenian Greek section, the completely opposite view and pushed for the return of the properties. Disagreements and tensions over this matter escalated, especially after the rise of the Ankara government. Before the Ankara government was ultimately recognized as the sole legitimate government of the country, the Ottoman government already put a stop to the activities of the commission by declaring that it did not have a legal basis. In the end, a if efforts for the return of seized properties came to a halt without producing any substantial effect for the people whose properties were seized during the war. Thank you.